When you're in the market for a new cell phone, but aren't ready for that two-year commitment, make Yakety Yak Wireless your first stop. Our experienced sales staff will help you choose the phone that's best for you. We carry a vast array of basic and smartphones, and at Yakety Yak, you can try it before you buy it. Looking to save some money? We sell used and unlocked phones and provide the best in iPhone repair. Come into Yakety Yak Wireless for all your mobile phone needs. Okay, we're going to take apart the iPhone 4S today. You'll need five tools. And those tools are going to be a flat bladed screwdriver, a blue pry stick, a spudger, a pair of tweezers, a penelope screwdriver, and a triple zero Phillips head screwdriver. This is the iPhone 4S. Looks very similar to the iPhone 4. The internals are where the differences are. So to begin with, what we're going to do is we're going to take out the two bottom screws. To do this, you're going to need a pentalobe screwdriver, which is a very special screwdriver. You can find them on eBay. Be very careful taking these out. Don't strip it. As you take out all these parts, you should lay them in order because all the screws are different and you want to be able to find out where they're going to go when you put them back in part two of our video. Slide this uh, back up and it should lift right off. Now you have the inside of the iPhone 4S. First thing we need to do is remove the battery. To remove the battery, there are two screws. There's the first one and the second one. Underneath the second one is a small attenuator piece that you don't want to lose. So we're going to take these out. Pry up the connector for the battery, and you'll see that little attenuator right there. Put that aside. We're going to need that later. Now, most videos are going to have you pull on the plastic tab to remove the battery. That will break that plastic tab, thus indicating to Apple that you've taken apart your phone. We actually use a spudger, and we come in from the opposite end so as not to break this little tab. You come pry down with the spudger, gently and the battery should remove from its adhesive and then you can just lift the battery right on out of there. Go ahead and set that aside. Next, we're going to have to start removing some of the EMI shields. The first one is covering the dock port flex connector. There are two screws. They are different sizes, so don't mix them up. Take out the two screws and then the EMI shield should just fall right off. We're going to pick it up here. There it is. We'll go ahead and set that aside. And now you can either use a blue stick or a spudger to pop off this flex cable. There's adhesive underneath it, so as you pull it out, the adhesive should give a little bit of resistance, but not too much. You can see the adhesive there. Next, we're going to go to the top EMI shield. There are four screws holding in the top EMI shield. You'll see them here. There's one, two, three, and four, and they are all, again, different sizes. So let's go ahead and pull out these four screws. I set these all in a pattern and then place the part right above the screws so that way I can see how they all go back together. As you take out this top piece, it has it's clipped near the top right hand side of it. So you can pry it up a little bit from this side, and then I grab it from the other side, as you'll see here, and pop it off. You just want to be careful not to tear any of the flex cables as you do it. Just make sure you're only grabbing the part. Notice there are two tabs down at the base of it. Those tabs are what you need to seat back in during our reassembly video, which I'll point out later on. There they are. You can see how that seats in there. Okay, now we're ready to disconnect some of the cables, but before we do that, there's one more tiny EMI shield right here, and this is over the top antenna. So we're going to go ahead and unscrew this one, and then you're going to use a pair of tweezers to gently pry it out. It's kind of held in by, it's almost a, like it clips in. It comes straight up when you pull it out, just be gentle on it. Let me see here, I'm going to pull on it. And it 
lifts right out. And that's the part you can see the V on the bottom of it which holds it in. And underneath that is actually the connector for the top antenna. So now we're going to use the blue pry bar and we're going to start popping off some of these flex cables. There's the one for the antenna. Next you're going to have the digitizer and the LCD. So first comes the digit. no, let's see, what are we going to do first here? We do the digitizer cable. And next comes the LCD cable. Just kind of fold those up here, out of the way. Next comes the camera, and the camera actually just fully removes out, so you can just lift it out and set it aside. There are three more flex cables. Here comes the first one. One of these three is actually hidden. So you're going to see the long one here. You can fold that back, and underneath it is your last little flex cable. So now you've disconnected all of your flex cables. Before you try and remove the motherboard, one of the things you want to do is make sure you pull out the SIM card tray, because if you don't and you yank on the motherboard, you're going to break it, and then you're going to be buying a brand new phone. So let's pull out that SIM card tray. Now, there's five screws. One. Hang on here. Oh, wait. Sorry. We're going to do the other antenna first. So this lower antenna, be really careful popping it up, and it's going to wind down through a connector right there and around the bottom screw joint, and then you just push it out of the way. Just be really careful connecting and disconnecting that, which now allows us to unscrew the screws for the motherboard. There's five. There's the first two. There's three. Four is actually tucked under a piece of tape, and there's five right there. The first one you're actually going to use a flat-bladed screwdriver on. Don't try and use Phillips. It doesn't work. There's two like that. The bottom right and the upper right are both flat-bladed screwdrivers. Okay. here to this next screw. You'll notice that I missed the one by the vibration motor. I'll come back to it. This next one up here, you actually have to peel back the tape. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And you can actually just take the piece of tape right on off of there and then put it back when you reassemble. So see, I got the tape out. And then you can do your unscrewing. And as you unscrew this, there's another tiny little attenuator that's stuck underneath the screw. You'll see, you got to remember to put this one back. It helps hold the camera in place. We're going to pull that one out of there. You can see it right there. It just sits right on top of the motherboard. Nothing fancy about it. Okay. We're going to go to the top right hand screw, which again is a flat bladed screw. Get that one out of there. Now we have one more screw. This is the bottom left one that I didn't do yet which is right over the vibration motor. Hang on here. You see the vibration motor? There's that last screw. We're going to go ahead and undo that one. And once you've done this, the motherboard should just be sitting in there. And you should be able to very gently lift from the bottom. Don't tear any of the flex cables. And it should just gently glide right on out of there. Go ahead and set that aside. After this, we're going to remove the bottom vibration motor. The vibration motor you can use just a uh, blue pry bar to pop it off. It's only held on by adhesive. There's no screws holding it at this point. You can see right here we got it to pop off. Just going to lift it up and out of the way. Putting it back in is pretty easy too because the adhesive is already on it. Okay, next comes the, um, the bottom uh, speaker box and antenna assembly. It actually sits on top of the dock port. And the iPhone 3G, it actually is the dock port. And the 4S, there's two separate pieces. So you're going to move this. Whenever you move this left-hand screw, notice there's a little bitty plastic triangular piece that just fell out right there. That piece sits on top before the screw goes in. It's a spacer. Don't lose it. and It only goes in one way. Then you undo the right hand screw. And once you undo this, that, that bottom assembly just lifts right on out. 
Take your finger and lift up on it. And there it goes. Now we've gotten everything out of the way, we're ready to undo the screws. There are 10 screws holding the screen onto the phone. Six of the screws have washers. So we'll start with the corner. There's one right there. Two, three, four. Screw number five is behind some tape right there. Screw number six. The other side, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now remember, the side screws have washers. Don't lose the washers. The washers help you bind it to the screen, and without them, the spacing isn't correct. So first, we're going to remove the tape from the upper left-hand one. And that screw's just tucked down there right behind that tape. And I usually just fold it down about halfway so I can get the screw out. I don't take this tape out because it's kind of tough to put back in. Uh, we got it. We're going to go ahead and start unscrewing all of these. I'm going to speed up the video for this because this is a kind of tedious thing. One of the things I found that when you uh, do all this work, it's best that if your screwdriver is magnetized and your uh, tweezers are not magnetized. It makes life a lot easier when putting the phone back together. A couple other things I'll talk about while this is going on. This one I'm taking apart is actually my iPhone, and if you'll notice, the screen was not broken. When the screen is broken, you will have glass everywhere. It's best to have like a little hand broom or vacuum to get all the glass out of the way before you reassemble. Um, also use uh, compressed air to blow it off the front of the phone, because you, any glass caught in there, the, and the new screen goes down against it, will crack the screen. The other thing that's nice, and a lot of people don't realize it, is when you take the screen off, there's adhesive at the top and bottom. Pull the adhesive and all the broken glass will come with it. You can then clean the area off and reapply new adhesive. You can find the adhesives on eBay. Okay, got all the screws out. Now we're ready to remove the screen. For this, I use the blue pry stick. And the thing that I do is I actually use my thumb to kind of put some pressure on the mid blade so that way I can get that pry stick in there. The adhesive is only at the top and bottom parts of the screen. It's not, at, uh, it's not on the sides, so start on the sides. You can use a heat gun. Don't take it above 140 degrees, though. Keep it, at, uh, keep it at about 140 if you have one where you can set the temperature. And don't overheat it. Uh, you just need to loosen up the adhesive a little bit. Since my screen's not broken here, I can actually give a little bit of pressure on it, and it's not going to damage it. You go all the way around and get this out. Be careful not to over pull on the screen because you've still got two flex cables that are wound through there, which you'll see in a second. We want to make sure we get them out correctly. We can go ahead on this side now. And once you get the adhesive to release, you want to fold down on the two flex cables, the digitizer and the LCD, and they're actually going to feed right through the midboard. And you're just going to do it very carefully and gently, and they go through. You got to kind of angle them out, and there you go. A couple of other things. Notice the home button on the 4S is different than the 4. It's held on with adhesive, and it's actually attached to the screen. The way to get that off, again, use a heat gun, warm it up a little bit, and the tape should peel right off. You can then apply it to your new screen before you rebuild your uh, iPhone. So if you like that, please uh, give us a shout out. It's Yakety Yak Wireless. Thank you.